Well, if you grew up listening and loving the tunes of Tom Jones, Karen Carpenter, Neil Diamond, and Elvis, we have just the event for you coming up this weekend in Kegel Harbor. Joining us now is one of the stars of that upcoming show, Byron Kinsella. Byron, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me, of course. So let's go back a little bit in time. Whenever we have uh, uh, artistic folks on, I always like to ask them, what, what was your musical inspiration? When did you start singing? Well, it was uh, from the sound of my mother's voice, just uh, whistling and humming uh, melodies uh, when I was two years old. In the, I think I was about two in the backseat of the car and I, uh, in the booster, just loving the sound of the human voice. So uh, that kind of captured my attention. It was sort of a, I think a natural, natural thing for me just to um, start singing. I, I used to be a toddler and sing in the living rooms when my parents had company. And, and my brother was in a garage band and I would always bug them to get on the microphone and sing with them. Uh, the inspiration, early inspiration, uh, musical, you know, I like the voices of a lot of female artists actually, like uh, Patti LaBelle, Barbra Streisand, artists like that that had uh, you know, big melodies, big strong endings. Uh, I sang in rock bands and alternative rock bands. So I, I sang everything from me very melodic to very uh, heavy metal, classic rock. You know, the band Kiss. I really appreciated Kiss because of the front man, Paul Stanley, and their antics, the, their, their, the, how, how, how thrilled the crowds always seemed to be and how happy everyone seems to be. The music was very happy and fun. Uh, so... It segued right into Tom Jones, Neil Diamond, and Elvis, because they're fun, happy, big, big, strong endings of some of their uh, ballads, and, and that's right up my alley. I just, I just love it. It's just, it's part of it. So you mentioned uh, some of the artists that you perform. You do a lot of Neil Diamond, Elvis, but that Tom Jones, when you hear you sing Tom Jones, it sounds like Tom Jones is singing. Can you talk a little bit about, um, did he have any inspiration on you, or did you just kind of uh, embrace him later in life? Well, I didn't really follow Tom Jones. I, I sang in a singing competition uh, back in Oct uh, 2014. It was called National Singing Star. And uh, I went in and sang All of Me. Uh, it, was, it was a cover song. And I ended up uh, getting into the contest and getting all the way through to the very end. And I asked the, uh, the director of the talent show what would be a really big song for me to sing, because you know, I really wanted to win it. And she said a song from Tom Jones called I Who Have Nothing. And I listened to that and and I just couldn't believe my ears. And then I started listening to Tom Jones more and more and more. Of course, I studied the song. Ultimately, I won the singing contest, uh, I think, in part from singing that song. Uh, but I just got immersed. And since 2014 is really when I've been studying Tom Jones. You know, everything from his interviews, his early shows, when he got carried away with his you know, kind of over the top sexuality and the, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, that back in the seventies, I think everyone's got a little carried away, but I appreciated his early years in his late sixties and early seventies, when he was just really belting us. He had a show called, uh, this is Tom Jones. And I must have, I, I watched several episodes of that just watching his manners and watching, uh, his voice, his throat structure and how he's singing and projecting. And it was kind of, there are some similarities to the way I sing naturally, so uh, it was a pretty, it was a pr pretty easy segue for me to to sing his songs. Once I, they're complex. I mean, they're semi-operatic, and, and there's you know big variety of melodies going on uh, with his songs, and uh, I just fell absolutely fell in love with it. You know, when I do do yard work or drive around in the tractor, I'm listening to Tom Jones. So this Saturday, a uh, chance for people to see some Tom Jones, see some other uh, songs you're going to perform with your wife, Michelle, and some other folks. A big Sweetest Day performance. Can you tell everybody about when and where they can take this show in? Yeah, so Santia Banquet Center is next to Gino's Restaurant uh, on Castle Elizabeth. And uh, it, it's a newly renovated banquet facility. Uh, uh, Irene and Gino were kind enough to have me do my very first show there when, the, when I was just beginning to do these sort of shows with the band. Um, and I remember, I think it was back in 2015 or 16, we did our very first show there. So uh, we are actually, this is a farewell show for me. I'm doing the very last 
show of this kind on the west side at Santia, and then the, the next one will be in April on the east side of town. Um, it's it's hard to keep a 12 piece band going and, and do as many shows and hold on, you know, and pay full 100% focus to my all day show, all day um, uh, full time job. And I can get into that a little bit later if you want to want to hear more about that. But the show this Saturday is very special. The seats are selling very quickly, especially as we enter into the, the final week leading up to it. I'm getting orders daily. Um, it is a 200 seat capacity and we're almost there. So I think there's like four more tables left in table seat 10. I did enter a show only price of $35. It's it's a a full menu it's going to be buffet style there'll be chicken piccata there'll be salmon fettuccine alfredo salads cheeses desserts coffee tea there'll be a beef carving station and uh so you'll be fed well i invite, invited a friend donnie rod who's a rod steward impersonator I always, I always like to bring in local artists uh, to have a little bit of fun at our shows so this time i'm bringing a rod steward impersonator to to kind of carry out a fun halftime and i'm going to do a two-hour show uh, doors will be 6.30, 7 o'clock, uh, you know, dinner, strolling buffet, and uh, I'll keep keep my eye on the crowd once everyone's had their food and they're kind of segue with the dessert and we'll start the show. And Michelle will come out, my wife, and uh, begin uh, with some Karen Carpenter, and uh, then we'll move uh, into the main show with uh, a mixture of um, my wife singing some other songs from other artists. I'll be singing Tom Jones. Neil Diamond, Elvis Presley, uh, Engelbert Humperdinck, and uh, it's just going to be an absolute blast. The band is on fire. Uh, it's a 12-piece band with backing vocalists. Uh, I have a very uh, high-end sound system and, and high-end uh, sound engineer, so it's going to sound very, very good. And we're also going to be respectful of noise levels. We're going to make sure it's a nice, full, rich sound uh, to carry throughout the room. So um, it will not disappoint. Well, Byron, we want to wish you folks great luck uh, this weekend. Enjoy the show. And if folks want to um, come out and enjoy it at the Santia Hall, they can just give them a call for reservations, correct? Uh, actually, yeah, they wouldn't need, they, they, they shouldn't call. It's actually all online. They can call for sure, and then they'll just explain where to go. But if you could post this uh, uh, post reel, um, or I can say it now, it's a website address. It's sweetest oct October 15th dot eventbrite.com and it's basically the word sweetest oct15 dot eventbrite.com and bright is spelled b-r-i-t-e so sweetest oct15 dot eventbrite b-r-i-t-e dot com and you click that link and you guys see everything you're going to need to see um there are uh discounts for tables of eight and tables of ten I'd like to see all the all our neighborhood friends there. This is going to be a very special show. It'll be emotional for me. Um, I, it's going to be wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, you guys, for supporting us all throughout the years.